Hey, Master Gardeners, I'm at it again. I'm at a customer's house in the Bel Air area. It's actually a Master Gardener. She's got damage on, what kind of tra shrub is this? Do you know? It's opposite. It's got kind of straight veins. Native, native plant, viburnum. There's tons of different kinds of viburnums. And all the viburnums can get subjected to this little insect that we're gonna look at. She has viburnum leaf beetle, which really was listed on the invasive species list for a while. It's here in the Harford County area. Here we are right now, it's mid-May, and it's feeding on her viburnum. It hasn't, this is an arrowwood viburnum. It hasn't attacked these bottom leaves too much, but let's take a look at the leaves at the top and we'll see what damage it looks like. Come on over and let's look at this. Here's, look at the holes in the foliage. Lots of damage. Notice the insect, what part of the vein does he like to eat? He doesn't like to eat the vein. He likes to eat between the veins. The veins are too coarse and he doesn't like that. He wants the more tender parts. Here's another leaf. Look, see, he's eating between the veins. So what's the little culprit look like? Well, let me show you some more damage. Here's another, another branch. Lots of damaged foliage out here. Actually on this very same stem, is the one that we found the eggs on and I'll show you. Look at the little insects there, they are right there. Actually, that's a good enough view. I won't have to zoom and look at him. Can you see him? Two of them right there. They're probably four or five millimeters long. I can stick my finger in there so you get maybe a little frame of reference on their size. Oop. They're pretty small little guys. So a little bit of black, they're kind of yellowish in color. So we searched around to try to find where he started because there's one branch over there. You can sort of see the whole part of that side of the shrub is defoliated. And I searched all over there trying to find the egg cases, but I didn't find them. I laid them down here on this white paper so you can look at them here. Here on this stem, I'll try to zoom in. Can you see those little marks? They do this on the underside of the narrow stems of the viburnum. And she punches a hole when she lays, the female viburnum leaf beetle will lay eggs inside of there. Let's look at this stem. Can you see those little lines and little marks along there where she kind of makes a pustule where she drives inside of the wooden branch? and she lays eggs. So what could really be done for control is to, in the winter months, come out here and search over top of your viburnum for those little marks where the females laid her eggs and actually prune those out of there. That's a nice organic way to do it. Another way is to spray the insect because it can kill the plant. Within two to three years of the original attack, it could take the life of your plant because it defoliates it over and over again. So what can be done is a spray program with a pyrethrin spray, but a more organic method might be to use a spinosad, which is a natural fungus, and you mix the spinosad with insecticidal soap also, and apply sprays like that. Or what I'm recommending to the homeowner is just come out every morning with a cup of coffee and pinch the little caterpillars that she finds on it. And that would be another control. So th there's other chemicals that are stronger. You would need to check in with your University of Maryland Extension office to get recommendations for the stronger things. But there's also a list um, put out by Cornell University on different viburnum species that are less prone and less susceptible. I actually have a list, I have it listed here, and I'm sure that University of Maryland would have this list, but they list them and they rank them by highly susceptible species, moderately susceptible, and which ones are resistant. But here's what the research said. It came into Canada back in the 1940s, and it attacked and killed most of the viburnums that it got on. And then it's worked its way down through the northern part of the United States. And they say in the Rochester area, the insect kind of followed the same life cycle. He would defoliate the plants and then eventually the natural predators would catch up. And since so many of the host plants would be gone, the insect could not thrive anymore. And so they would notice so many changes that the original species like this arrowwood viburnum seems that it can be planted now. Even though it's susceptible, there's not enough population of the viburnum leaf beetle to kill your plants. So, so don't be scared if you have this, but if you have it, you do need to treat your shrubs and check the university websites for susceptible viburnums. All right, hope you had some new facts. Bye.